Hello, I'm Alex Giambapa, stand-up comedian and proud American. Usually, when an empire is declining, it follows a very similar pattern. This usually includes economic instability, social unrest, military overstretch, as well as 26 billion for Israel. And it's clear what's happening is not genocide. And political corruption. New York City Mayor Merrick, Eric Adams. Adams is accused of accepting bribes from Turkish officials. Dyson sends a powerful message to every elected official in this country. Public service is a profound responsibility. We gotta take this stuff seriously, as seriously as you are, because you have been forced to have to take it seriously. <laughs> Luckily, that doesn't sound like us at all. <laughs> and now, totally unrelated to that, please enjoy my new comedy special, Empire in Decline. I'm so happy to introduce your headliner. He is a true American hero. Guys, let's welcome Alex G and Papa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out and supporting. Uh, I'm excited to be doing some comedy. I had kind of a frustrating day because I was trying to explain inflation to my parents. I was trying to break it down for them like the way they used to break down word problems for me. <laughs> they used to be like, so if Kevin has seven apples on Tuesday and nine apples on Wednesday, how many apples did Kevin gain? And now I'm like, if you made $15 an hour in 1983, and I made $15 an hour in 2024, and rent is six times as much, you should pay my phone bill. <laughs> uh, I do, I love doing that joke for a mixed age crowd. Because we got people laughing and clapping, and then we got people still paying phone bills. <laughs> There is a lot of generational tension uh, between older people and younger people. I think that's because so much changed in such a short period of time. Like even basic phrasing, right? Like hook up used to mean you're gonna meet up with people and go do something. And now hook up means that you're gonna fuck them. <laughs> but my mom will still be like, oh, your cousin's in town. <laughs> You guys should hook up. <laughs> My mom also used to tell me that if a kid at school was being mean to me, that I should tell them to take a long walk off a short pier, which is like the hottest diss in 1954. <laughs> but it's like 1997. And some kid on the playground is like, Jim Papa, you're a pussy. And I'm like, hey, take a long walk off a short beat. <laughs> I think that generationally, we should agree not to discuss certain things in the interest of getting along. Right? Like the environment. Let's never talk about it. <laughs> like, cause like my neighbor, nice guy, older guy, just making small talk. He was like, oh, the weather lately has been crazy. I was like, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's hypocritical about their politics, right? Like the guy called me out cause he caught me not recycling. He's like, oh, you're throwing out a plastic bottle. <laughs> you don't believe in climate change? <laughs> I, had to double, I had to double down, you know. I was like, actually, Larry. 
I'm throwing this out because I think it's too late to recycle. <laughs> you don't believe in climate change enough. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know, my parents keep hitting me with this one. Uh, nobody wants to work anymore. And it's like, nobody has ever wanted to work. That's why they have to pay you to do it. Like if they're not paying you to do it, that's slavery or an internship, but it's one of those two things. Crazy to me. And I, I know that, you know, there's purposeful jobs that people are proud of. There's police and firefighters, stand-up comedians, there's important stuff. <laughs> and I understand that, you know, for a long time in society, everybody had to do something in order for us to get by. But then slowly, technology has made that less the case. But the people who go to the necessary jobs are like, well, I don't want to have to go in unless you have to go in, which is also fair. But what ends up happening is 95% of us just work fake jobs, <laughs> right? Like uh, who here can work from home? Clap it up. Okay, fake jobs, those are fake jobs. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, it's the best kind of job to have. It's an email job. You wake up in the morning, and you're like, oh, all these emails. <laughs> like there's jobs where if the person doesn't go in, the highway collapses. <laughs> like there's a guy on the freeway with a jackhammer who's just drilling into the concrete for 14 hours and you're at home. Like, oh, she's asking me this again per my last email. <laughs> Uh, work from home people, clap it up one more time. Oh, there's less. There's less now. That's interesting. <laughs> Can I grab a water from one of you bad boys? No rush, but at some point. Thank you. I'm sure you guys can hear the cotton mouth. <laughs> That's what happens when you like to smoke a joint 45 minutes before you're set. <laughs> Sorry. 45 seconds before you're set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work from home, people. All right, who do we got? Clap it up one more time for me. Okay, what do you do? Paralegal. You're a paralegal? All right. See, here's the thing about... Here's the thing about paralegals. Nobody actually knows what that is. Nobody has any, I can't wait for the special to come out and as I'm doing the paralegal part, I just reach off screen and just grab. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, nobody, nobody knows what a paralegal is. But when you're an adult, you hear paralegal and you're like, I should probably know what that is. <laughs> so does anyone know what a paralegal is? Oh, what, what, no. <laughs> she went, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. See, we're, we're all just used to lying about it. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest here. Man, we have, like we know it's probably illegal, like you work in a law office. Okay, right. For what? For the government. For the government. Ooh. <laughs> 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 Huh? We sue corporations. You sue corporations? <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so what corporations have you sued? Uh, well, I just started. You so. just started? Oh, well, she hasn't done shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like being like I'm. Uh, I'm an emergency room doctor, actually. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, so it's like the craziest thing you've seen. It's like, well, I start Tuesday. <laughs> 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 
What's up? You sued Uber. You sued Uber? Nice. Okay. Now Uber's just, you know, you get paid $3.17 an hour to ruin your car. Uh, other work from home people. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, nerd? <laughs> You should be going in. <laughs> so you, you you never go in or like, like do you, when it's really needed. When, <laughs> when it's needed. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so this is this is a hybrid nurse. <laughs> this is this is the world we live in. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like imagine if you were bleeding out and you crawled over to the phone and dialed 911 and the last words that you heard were uh, you did the right thing uh, unfortunately on Tuesdays and Thursdays <laughs> Any more uh, work from home, folks? One left and one remains. That's so weird. There were, there were 30. And then I did crowd work for two. And then there was one. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. What do, what do you do? I'm a financial analyst. You're a financial analyst? Fakest fucking job there is going on. Yeah, it's, like, it's amazing, it's amazing. Here's what she does, is like, you know, all these people running all these companies, it's a bunch of, no offense, a bunch of fucking boomers. They got, they got no idea what's going on. They're like, we need to bring in a financial analyst. And they hand her a bunch of numbers, and then she punches it into a spreadsheet. It takes her, it takes her 30 seconds. Then she's like, I'm gonna bill you for eight hours. And the boomers are like, amazing work. <laughs> and then they, they open up the spreadsheet and it's just a green line going up, which is good. <laughs> or it's a red line going down, which is bad. <laughs> okay, any more work from home folks? Hmm? Okay, was anyone like working from home during the pandemic and then they had to go back into the office? Worst no, those, worst okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone, was anyone working during the pandemic and then they had to go back in? Okay, those people, those people killed themselves. Okay, so. <laughs> if, if I had been working from home and I had been accustomed to it, and I had to go back in. <laughs> I would have showed up that first day, just sweatpants, slippers, reeking of marijuana. <laughs> just like, look man, if you're not gonna let me work from home, I'm gonna home from work. <laughs> Guy yelled out one time, he was like, I'm gonna use that. I was like, don't. <laughs> I, I just have to clarify. Is the arepa in the shot? No. It's not? Okay, I'm just, I'm just making sure because I feel like all of the comments on YouTube are gonna be like, uh, wow, this was funny. Also, that arepa looks great. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it is so funny that it's like a dirty word. It sounds like what a, like an OG Boston guy would call a rapist. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, I don't let that guy in, he's a raper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep things light. Who's everyone voting for in November? Let's <laughs> Please don't actually 
yell out who you're gonna vote for. Because, you know, like truly, whatever you're doing in November, uh, I think you're an American, and at the end of the day, your voice does not matter. <laughs> I think it's good they got rid of Joe Biden. Uh, it was very surprising to me it took that debate for people to realize, like, oh, this guy is out of it. <laughs> you know, like, my only question for you, if you're just realizing that the president has dementia, is uh, do you have dementia? <laughs> like, dude, this has, been, this has been going on, right? Like, I know it was hard to tell because the news would make excuses for him. You know, they'd be like, oh, Biden has a stutter. And it's like, he just called the president of China, Jackie Chan. <laughs> or scared. Everyone I knew, regardless of politics, four years ago was like, all right, these two guys are probably too old to be president. And then, Time passed, <laughs> and it was almost the same two guys. <laughs> like, dude, the election was so close to being like, if you were about to break up with your boyfriend, and right as soon as you did, and got back on all the dating apps and all the dating websites, the only two other people on there were the guy you just dumped in your last ex-boyfriend. <laughs> And it's like, I was looking forward to trying out any other human being. <laughs> and so crazy that we're always told we have this amazing democracy that we are so lucky to take part in, but then they only realistically give us two choices. Because that's like one away <laughs> from just not being a democracy. <laughs> like, it's almost like you're giving me the bare minimum amount of choices <laughs> while then simultaneously giving me the shittiest possible choices. It feels like I went to a buffet and all they had was old rice and older rice. <laughs> and I won't tell you out of those two guys who I was gonna vote for. I'll tell you who I was not gonna vote for. I was not gonna vote for a guy who's so old, I don't even know if his brain works. I'm not gonna vote for a guy who did a terrible job, and I'm not gonna vote for a guy who, frankly, I think is a creep to women and girls. And you can just take that and apply it to whichever guy you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> now we got Kamala Harris. And Kamala is so interesting to me because she's a woman and she's black and she's Indian and it is confusing the Republicans. <laughs> Dude, it's throwing them off because they're like, ah, now I gotta be sexist and two types of racist at once. <laughs> like, you know, there's a strategy meeting in DC where they're like, Kamala, can we get you to come out as non-binary or put you in a wheelchair? <laughs> and I don't have a lot of jokes about Kamala just because, you know, in this current, in this current uh, political cycle, Every three days, some history happens, and you have to go rewrite your entire act, <laughs> right? Like, dude, like, Trump almost gets shot in the head, and you're like, as a comedian, you're like, all right, this is not funny for at least two weeks. <laughs> and then, finally, it's funny, and I'm joking about it, and then, last week, some other guy <laughs> tries to shoot him, thus making the original joke unfunny again. <laughs> and I'm taping the special tonight. So I can't even make the joke. You know what I mean? Like what happens when shit like that goes down is everyone who sees it makes the same joke in their head. And then 
A few weeks later, the comedians are the first people to say it out loud, and then we all laugh at the joke that we all already made. <laughs> but I can't make the joke now. Right, I can't do it. I can't be like, third time's the charm. I can't make that joke. <laughs> it would just be unreasonable to do that joke. <laughs> I will say, dude, that first, that first assassination attack on Trump. <laughs> that was not the funny part. <laughs> Yo, this, this chick is number three, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Man, my respect to you, you got, you got a lot of hate in your heart. <laughs> you had, that is a true hater right there. That is, that is Trump's Kendrick Lamar right there. That is amazing. That first assassination attempt is, is so crazy to me, truly because, like, Trump gets shot at, and at the last second, he moves his head just a little bit, and the bullet misses him completely, right? And what happened in that moment is that Trump made a very subtle motion, like a, a truly insignificant act, which then, prevented what would have been one of the most profound moments in American history. And that is truly, like to think about, mind-blowing. No, that's not the right phrase. So it's, That's, that's the one that gets us banned from you, too. <laughs> to even imagine, right? Like, you have one tiny difference, and that alters the course of history. Like, it's basically like if uh, on 9-11, Mark Wahlberg had been on the plane. <laughs> it just wouldn't have happened. <laughs> All right. Clap it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, okay. And also, it's, it's more than that. It's more than that. Okay, this is my favorite joke to tell because when people don't know the reference, I get to then explain the reference. You know what I mean? So, uh, there is a real, real interview uh, with famous actor, Mark Wahlberg, where he says, uh, if he had been on the plane on 9-11, it wouldn't have gone down like that. <laughs> Which is so amazing to me in this context, because <laughs> it's actually like a very Trump thing to say. You know what I mean? It's like the most Trump thing ever said by somebody who's not Donald Trump. And I can't, I can't do Donald Trump, I can't do his voice, but you know, you know how he's always like, it's like, <laughs> no offense to anyone who was on the plane. If I had been there. <laughs> But I just, I cannot do Donald Trump. Can anyone in the crowd do a decent Donald Trump impression? No? No, but? If you can do it, you could volunteer. If not, no, you, you, oh my, okay. All right, let's give it up for this guy. Come on, come on up. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So I, I mean, so let's just, I mean, we'll hear, and if it's not great, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. 
I can't do one. And we'll just say, you know, basically if I had been on the plane on 9-11, it wouldn't have gone down like that. <laughs> if I was on the plane. <laughs> If I was on the plane that day, I can promise you, I promise you it would not have gone down that way. It would have gone down a whole other way. Like do amazing impressions. <laughs> what? It's crazy. The thing about Trump to me has always been that the people who love him and the people who hate him constantly make him out to be more than he really is. You know what I mean? Like to me, he mostly is just an example of how the government does not understand its people. Right, because the government, when Trump started running again, tried to charge him with things that would make him unpopular. Uh, and the first thing that they charged Donald Trump with was the Stormy Daniels thing. So the government's plan was to come out to everyone in America who likes Donald Trump and say, so, your hero had sex with a blonde born star with big fake boobs. Still think he's cool? <laughs> and then the Republicans don't have a clue either. Right, they come out and they have these photos of Hunter Biden doing blow with hookers. And they're like, so? still think the Biden family's cool? <laughs> and it's like all you're doing is making America want to party with Donald Trump and Hunter Biden at the same time, which oddly enough might be what brings this country together. <laughs> I mean, you can probably tell from my lazy demeanor, I was a Bernie Sanders guy. <laughs> yeah. You hear those seven claps? That's why we lost. Uh, not, it's not like an endorsement of all the stuff that Bernie wanted to do. It was just, I would see him on TV and he'd be like. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's how I feel inside. <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice to see politician panicking for once. <laughs> I remember an uh, older guy I worked with was like, hey, uh, you don't want Bernie. He wants to do socialism. And I, I had never heard that word before. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And he was like, it's bad. <laughs> And I was like, it sounds like you also don't know what it is. <laughs> and, then, and then the stimulus checks came out. And he was like, there you go. Yeah, socialism. And I was like, well, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> in their lives. Sometimes you gotta take accountability. You know, like there's gonna be a guy tonight who can't get it up, who's like, Karl Marx talked about this. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was hanging out with some people recently and uh, I yawned. 
And uh, this, this girl looks at me and she goes, that's capitalism. <laughs> And, she, and I was like, what? And she was like, you have to work hours you don't want to work. So you can't sleep when you want to sleep. So you couldn't wake up as late as you wanted to wake up. So you're tired. So that's capitalism. <laughs> I was like, uh, and I then had to explain to this woman that the reason I was yawning was because I had slept for 14 hours the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I don't have a job. <laughs> like really, what I need is a little capitalism. <laughs> I, uh, well, first of all, um, I, I've had to rewrite this entire act like a bunch of times. And also, I really like to improvise. So usually at this point in the show, I just say, uh, if there's anything that I haven't discussed, <laughs> that uh, you feel was insane during this little election cycle. On, on any side, uh, go ahead and yell it out, and we'll fucking do it. Feel free. What do you mean? <laughs> well, look, I mean, you did break down the mood a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right, it's all right. Yeah. In all seriousness, and this is the only part of the set where, you know, it's not just totally comedy. Uh, you know, it's, it's been crazy being around New England and Massachusetts um, during this entire thing. Um, especially for me, because I have, I have Jewish family, right? And people come up to me and they're like, how could things have gotten so bad when it seems like for so long they, they were so good? And I literally don't know if they're talking about Israel, or Palestine, or the Patriots. <laughs> you know, they're like, we've lost so many men. And I'm like, I know, Brady and Belichick. <laughs> uh, you didn't think I had that one, huh? <laughs> Uh, anything else? Anything else? You guys are like, no, you covered quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll leave you with a little thoughts here, and then I'll tell you what, you know, what I think people should do uh, for the election. Um, and this is, again, just a thought. So sometimes uh, people will go on strike. Right, sometimes the workers will decide, I don't like the conditions or the pay isn't good enough, and they'll go on strike. And then the boss has to decide, okay, uh, should I get rid of these people because I don't need them and I'd be fine? Or should I keep them because I, I need them? And my question for you, it's just something to take home and think about, is why is it that the president never goes on strike. Why, why is that? Is it, is it because we'd be fine? Is it because president is a fake job? In fact, you get to move into the White House, so it's also fucking work from home. Fake fucking job. <laughs> what do you do? Everybody's like, please, please sign that piece of paper. <laughs> and you're like, I think I can And then everybody.
everybody's like, please don't sign that piece of paper. And you're like, I can hang it. <laughs> People keep asking me, you know, uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for the election? And uh, I'm not crazy about either candidate, but uh, I will say this, and I don't like to inject my own politics into this stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it might be important. Uh, and I think it's valid, and, and I think it's time. Okay, so uh, I believe that it's, it's time for the first female president. And that's why, and that's why I'm writing in Hillary Clinton. Let's go. Revenge tour. We're not going to lose. We're not going to lose. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just, I, I, I'm joking, of course. What I'm thinking is, is something else, right? Because I think that, I think that if people really got on the same page and really did the same thing at the ballot box, you wouldn't have to burn it all down. And I know, a lot of people are like, but that would be fun. I know, I understand. <laughs> but I really do think that positive change is possible through our government and through voting and through this election, right? Because what I'm going to do is vote for nobody. <laughs> I don't mean not vote. What I'm saying is when you get to the ballot box and you have to put in your candidate, write in nobody. <laughs> Because if enough of us do that, <laughs> in November, they're gonna have to come out and be like, uh, so, the, the winner is nobody. So, I, I think we're done here. <laughs> and folks, I think we're done here. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I've been Alex Giampapa. Thank you, and God bless America.